Today we are going to learn about dividing decimals using estimation. The first thing you will need to do is write down this problem. 46 and 8 tenths divided by 13. Do this now. Now it's important to know the different terms in division. And I know we've talked about these before, but I know some of my, my students and myself always need a refresher or tricks to remember them. So this is what our problem looked like when we wrote it kind of, but with different numbers. And it's important to realize that when we write it like this, the dividend is first, the divisor is second, and the quotient comes last. Another way we can write division problems is using the half box method. And what this looks like is the divisor is on the outside to the left, the dividend is on the inside below, and the quotient is on top. Now, these mean the same things, but they look different because in one, the dividend comes first and the other, the divisor comes first. So it's important to not confuse how these are written. I know this confuses me, and so I have one strategy that helps me remember what terms are where, and that's using my queen quotient strategy. And all this is is that it shows my quotient, queen quotient, is always on top of her throne in her castle. And of course, queen quotient, like any other kings and queens, must have advisors. She has two. The first one is her divisor, and this advisor is afraid of her, so she always stays on the outside of the castle when giving advice. The other advisor is known as the dividend, and he loves the queen and gives advice from inside the den of the castle, the den being a small room. I don't know if this will help you, but it sure helps me remember where, which goes where. Now, for step one in dividing decimals using estimation. When I use estimation, I like to change my decimals into whole numbers. It just makes using things easier, and I have to worry less about where my decimal point is later on when I'm at the division step of my solution. So step one tells me I need to put stars next to the divisor or the dividend with the decimal point that will need to move the most spaces. Again, here's a little reminder. If there is anything that you need help remembering, you can just refer back to it. So in our problem, 46 and 8 tenths divided by 13, I starred my div dividend because I know that the decimal point was between the six and the eight, and that I would have to move one whole space before becoming a whole number. Because whole numbers always have a decimal point to the right of all its numbers. Kind of like a sentence with a period at the end. In this problem, you also will notice that I put a decimal point after the number 13. And that's because I just wanted to remind myself that even though whole numbers don't always show us it has a decimal point, there is always one there. Write this down on your problem now, the stars and the decimal point for number 13. Make sure it looks like my problem here. Step two in the process is using the number you starred, you're going to move that decimal point so that the number becomes a whole number. So looking at our problem, 46 and 8 tenths, I move the decimal point from between the 6 and the 8 to the other side of the 8. I moved it one whole space. The decimal point had to move past one number to turn 46 and 8 tenths into a whole number, which is now 468. Do this to your problem right now. Make sure your paper looks like the image here. Step three, now I must count the number of spaces you move the decimal point or the number 
of or how, count how many numbers the decimal point had to pass to be turned into a whole number. And then you're going to do the same thing to the other number. For example, I know that in 46 and 8 tenths, I moved the decimal point one whole space. It only passed one number before becoming a whole number. So that means when looking at my number 13, I also have to move that decimal point one whole space. Do this on your problem now and make sure it looks like my problem in the image here. Step four. Now, if there are any empty spaces, put in a zero so that you know where your decimal point is in your whole number. This will also change what your number looks like. So for example here, when I move the decimal point in my number 13, there was a big empty space and I can't write 13 empty space decimal point. Instead, I had to write 13 and a zero and then the decimal point. So my new number becomes 100. 30. Make sure your paper looks like this now. Now, all we have to do is divide as normal. And this is kind of where you may go off on your own. Some people may prefer to keep it written as 468 divided by 13. Or you might be, decide to write it using that box method in the right corner. This is your choice. Decide how you want to rewrite your problem, because a lot of times when you're moving decimal points, things get confusing and it's easier to just read the new problem. Now, when I divide as normal, I like to write it using the box method. And I use the strategy of does McDonald's sell burgers raw, which really stands for divide, multiply, subtract, bring down, repeat, or remainder. In this video, I'll walk you through the steps of solving our problem 468 divided by 13 here. Finally, the last step in dividing decimals using estimation or in turning those decimals into equivalent numbers is using division to divide it normally. And so I like to set mine up where the divisor is on the left side, the dividends on the inside or on the right side. And then my queen quotient goes right up top for me to solve. If you like to do it any other way, it's totally person by person preference. Um, so I'm gonna use the strategy, does McDonald's sell burgers raw? And so I have that kind of written on the side of my problem to kind of help me track where I'm at and so I don't get lost. Uh, does McDonald's sell burgers raw? Just stands for my division steps. Divide, multiply, subtract, bring down, repeat, or remainder. My first step is to do the division, and I always start by saying 13, can it go into that first number of my dividend? And I know 13 is bigger than four, so it can't go into four. So I have to put a zero above the four. That way I'm making sure I'm lining up my numbers. And that is extremely important, especially when dividing with decimals because if you don't line up your numbers, then you end up putting the decimal in the wrong place. Super easy to happen. So if I have a zero up here, I know I have to look at more than just the four. I have to look at the first two numbers in my dividend, which is the four and the six, which is also 46. And I have to ask, can 13 go into 46? Yes, 46 is bigger than 13, so I know 13 can go into it at least one time. Uh, I know that 13 go into 46 at least three times. So for my division step, I'm gonna put a three above the six. Again, it's so important that this number goes above this number. And I can check off that I did that division step. I then can move down and do my next step, which is multiplication. And for multiplication, I know I have to multiply whatever I put up in my quotient times my divisor. And that is 13 times 3. And if I don't know my 13 multiplications by heart, it's okay. On the side of my paper, I can write a note like this and figure it out. Or I can draw a picture. Or I can use any strategy that helps me figure out multiplication steps that I don't know right away. Uh, I like to just do this because it's real fast for me. 3 times 3, 9. 
1 times 3, 3. And I know 3 times 13 is 39. I can just erase that so it's out of my way and check off that I did multiplication. The next step I need to do is go down to subtraction. I know I have to subtract 46 minus 39. Now, if you want to just do it in your head, that's totally fine. I like to just go step by step because otherwise I get lost. And so I'll first I'll just start by 6 minus 9. I know I can't do 6 minus 9, so I don't have to borrow from my next door neighbor. So my 4 becomes a 3, and my 6 becomes a 16. And then I know I can just subtract as normal. 16 minus 9 is 7. 3 minus 3 is 0. I don't need to put anything there. I can if I want to. And now my subtraction step is complete. I then go down to bring down. And I go to my dividend and I look, are there any numbers left over that I can bring down and continue the process? Absolutely. I can bring down this eight. So then seven becomes 78. And I have completed my bring down step. The next step is the repeat or remainder. And I look at this number and I ask, is this number bigger than this number. If this number is bigger than this number, then I repeat and I ask myself, does 13 go into 78? Because that is my division step. Because now, if I'm repeating, I go all the way back to step one. So, can 13 go into 78? Yeah. I don't really know my, multi my 13 multiplication, so what do I do? Well, I'm just gonna go check on the side of my paper and I'm gonna take a guess. Um, I know that 13 times 3 is 39, so maybe I try 6. 13 times 6, 3 times 6, 18. 6 times 1 is 6, plus 1, 7. And I kind of guess right on the first try. So I know that 13 can go to 78 6 times. And I've done my division step. I then go down to my multiplication step. And I know that I have to do whatever number I put up in my quotient times 13. So 13 times 6, I already did it when I was trying to practice and check to see what can, how many times 13 can go into 78. So I know I just put 78 times here, down here. And I can erase my notes if I want. And my multiplication step is done. I then go down to subtraction. And I know I have to subtract 78 minus 78, which gives me zero. And I can check off my subtraction step. Go down to bring down, and I go and look at my dividend. Is there any numbers left over for me to bring down? No. If there was, I would bring it down. There isn't anything, so I can just check off my bring down step. Finally, I go down to the R for my repeat remainder. I ask that question, does this number, is it bigger than this number? No, it's zero. So my remainder would technically be zero. I don't have to write it because who cares about a remainder of zero. So my answer would be 36. Finally, the last step in dividing decimals using estimation Now it's time to practice what we've learned. We're gonna write down a whole new problem and practice. All right, now it's time to put all the things we learned to practice. We're going to walk through each step and see if we can figure out how to apply it. The first thing you will need to do is write down this problem. 85 and 4 tenths divided by 14 hundredths. While we are working through these problems, I'll give you some time to try to figure out what you should do in your problem. And then you can check it to mine. Step one tells me that we need to put stars next to the divisor or the dividend with the decimal point that will need to move the most spaces. So the first thing I need to do is look at my dividend and my divisor and say, okay, which one does the decimal point have to move the most? 
I like to work left to right, so I'm going to start by looking at my dividend. My dividend is 85 and 4 tenths, and I know in order to turn that into a whole number, the decimal point would have to move one whole space or pass one whole number in order to be on the right side of all my numbers and turn it into a whole number. One whole space. However, looking at my divisor, I know I'd have to move two whole spaces to be turned into a whole number because my decimal point would have to be on the right side of the four in order to be a whole number, which means that my divisor would need to move two whole spaces. That means that I'm going to put a star next to my divisor because I know it's the decimal point is doing the most moving there. Make sure your paper looks like mine now. Now I'm going to look at step two. Using the number you starred, move the decimal point so that number becomes a whole number. All right, now it's time to move my decimal point. So I'm going to put my decimal point, one, two, to the right of my four to make it a whole number. Do this now and make sure your paper looks like my problem. Step three. Now I need to count the number of spaces you move the decimal point. Then I do the same thing to my other number. So the first thing I need to do is figure out how many numbers or how many spaces my decimal moved. And if you're a visual person, you can even write it down. For example, one, two. My decimal point moved two spaces. So that means in my dividend, I also have to move that decimal point two spaces. One, two. So it would go right there. Do this now and make sure your paper looks like my problem. Step four. If there are any empty spaces, put in a zero so you know where the decimal point is in your whole number. This part's super important. If you don't put a zero in the empty space, then you might not know what your number is or it might change what number you're looking at. So I have to make sure I put a zero in this extra space. This is where things can sometimes get messy. So I like to rewrite my problem so I can better see it. My new problem would look like this. Does your problem look like this? Remember, you don't have to have the decimal point. If your problem also looks like this without decimal points, that is perfectly fine. Now, step five is just to divide as normally. So, I'm going to rewrite my problem because I like to use the strategy of does McDonald's sell burgers raw? So I like to write my problem so that it is created like, or looks like this. Four, whoops. Fourteen on the outside and eight thousand five hundred forty on the inside. Remember, in this way, your divisor is on the outside and your dividend is on the inside. These two numbers are going to give you queen quotient, which will end up on top. So now I'm also going to include. Does McDonald's sell 
burgers raw. Or division, multiplication, subtraction, bring down, repeat, or remainder. And the first thing I need to look at is can 14 go into 8? And I know 14 cannot go into 8. So I need to put a 0 over it because 14 is larger than 8. That means I have to look at the 8 and the 5, the first two numbers in my problem. Now on the side of my paper, I might have to guess and check because I may not know my 14 multiplications. I'll give you some time to see if you can figure out how many times 14 can go into 85. All right, did you guess six or figure out six? If you did, that's correct. And then I'm gonna put a little check next to division because I did my division step. The next step I need to look at is my multiplication step. So that means I have to multiply 14 times six. Go ahead and do this now. Figure out what 14 times six is. Did you figure it out? The answer is 84. So that means I have to put 84 down here and can check off multiplication. I then go down to the next step in my Does McDonald's Sell Burgers Raw strategy, and that is subtraction. And I know I need to subtract 85 minus 84. And that will give me one and then I can check off subtraction. Notice how all of my numbers are lining up perfectly. Make sure you are doing this with yours, otherwise you might end up with the wrong answer. After subtraction, the next step is to bring down, and I have to look at my div div dividend and say, do I have any numbers to bring down? And I do, I have a four and a zero. However, I can only bring down one number at a time. So I look at what number comes after my five, and that is four. And so my one becomes a 14. And I can check off, bring down. I then go down to my next step, and that is repeat or remainder. And I have to ask myself, is 14 bigger than the divisor? Well, no but it is the same number, which means they can go into each other. So I know I'm going to have to repeat all of my steps over again. So I can check off my repeat or remainder. And now I must go back to the beginning steps, which is division. And I know 14 divided by 14 gives me one. So I'm gonna put that above the four because that was the last number I worked with in my dividend. Again, it is super important to make sure we're lining up those numbers. I then can check off my division step. I next move down to multiplication. And I know I have to multiply my divisor times whatever number I just wrote up in my quotient. And so that means 14 times 1. And then I write it down here. The next step I need to do is subtraction. See if you can figure out what you're going to subtract. Did you guess 14 minus 14? You are correct. And that means zero. And I can check off subtraction. I then go down to my bring down step. 
and I have to again look at my dividend. Is there a number to bring down? If you said yes, you're correct. We have to bring down that zero. And then I can check it off. Now I have to look at my repeat or remainder. And this one's a little bit different because we still had a number to work with in a dividend. However, you still have to ask yourself the question, is zero bigger than 14? No, it's not. However, we still need to use this zero because it was in our dividend. So that means we have to put it up top in our quotient. And then we're done because we would be repeating over and over again. So your answer for this problem would have to be 610.